All right. You got a little preview earlier, just a second ago, because I didn't realize I didn't have it on the starting soon screen. <clears throat> so you got to see me running around a little bit, trying to get ready for stream. But I am now moderately ready for the stream. So today we will be building probably both of these because I don't think it's going to take very long and just for comparison, but <clears throat> we've got the 2% milk or 0.2% 0 uh, 0 milk from Jerry Cave. <clears throat> it is the same thing as the 2% milk. It's a two key macro pad that now that I'm looking at it, might not actually fit in the... Oh no, it does. Um, <clears throat> but it's a little 3D printed milk carton. And so you've, you've got a milk carton with two keys. And because like, especially on the 40s server where this apparently originated from, because this got 40s logos on there. Um, that's all about, keyboards are all about percent, right? <clears throat> so you've got like... 75% has F rows, 60% doesn't, 40% has no numbers, or I, I don't even know what the percentages are, because I deal a number of keys that are even remaining. But, suffice to say that percentage is a big unit of measurement in the keyboard community. So, 2% is kind of a joke on there's only two switches. And then, of course, if you've got 2%, you've got 2% milk. That's the whole thing. That's that's all of it. And my soldering iron. Oh, I thought I had turned it on. Maybe I turned it off. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so it looks like a little milk carton with two switches coming out of it. I'm gonna put some fun caps on there. Um, I got this one, this this carton <laughs> before uh, before I had a 3D printer and I never printed one of my own, but it's got some like sparkly blue filament. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Uh, so the original 2% milk has, is powered by a Pro Micro compatible switch or a controller. So, um, it only uses a couple of these. I actually built one of these on stream a while back and screwed it up. I know. How do you screw up something so simple? Well, I had the orientation of the USB port backward. So it was the correct side up, but it was the wrong way around. And I didn't realize it until I soldered it all. And I'm just like, well, that's that. I'm not going to unsolder it. I um, used the free all PCB order stuff to buy five of these. They sent me six. I don't know why. I was uh, joking at the time that maybe they just had a stack of these already made up for to send to people who tried to because i just took the gerbers directly off the two percent milk github like i didn't try to make it my own such that it it would pass their deduplication mechanism or something like that i just yeah so i got six of them so i'm gonna probably use one today because we'll probably build both of these <clears throat> although i only have one case so one of them is going to be naked but that's fine Maybe it's a skim 2% milk. I don't know. Yeah, I got the Jerry Cave one from Jerry Cave. In fact, all of the parts that you're going to see, except for this and this and a Pro Micro, are from Jerry. He graciously gifted these to me. Um, but he also said that I have to try to solder the LEDs. So if you look really, really close here, right there... There are four pads, and right there, four more pads. Those are the RGBs, and I have to solder those. It's going to be fun. It's, uh, yeah, uh, so the the main difference between, I don't know if I talked about this, the main difference between the 2% milk and the 0.2% milk is the 2% milk takes a Pro Micro, Pro Micro compatible controller. The 0.2% milk has an embedded controller and all the components you need for an embedded controller. So it's tiny. Um, it takes an AT tiny 85 controller. I don't remember. There was something like it takes both through hole and surface mount ones. And I think I've got surface mount. I haven't actually looked through this box from Jerry yet. 
I have, but I mean, like, really... Okay, so those are the LEDs. They're 1515 LEDs. Whatever that means. Um, so I've got the... Uh, the 2% milk has a tall USB port for case compatibility. So if you stay, if you take this and stick it in here and put a Pearl Micro on it, that's about where the USB port is. But this, since it's flush, the USB port isn't going to go, isn't going to be tall enough. So he's got these special, super tall USB ports. Um, let's see what else. <clears throat> Yeah, it'll be fine. A little intimidating, but it'll be fine. So I've got some IC holders, but I don't know if he gave me the through-hole or surface mount controllers. Got a bunch of through-hole diodes. A bunch of other stuff. Reset buttons. Teeny tiny little SOD302. 323 fuckers, as it says on the box. I have a whole roll of those because <laughs> I accidentally bought them because I didn't. I just was like, oh, it's the one in F14 or whatever the hell diodes. SOD323. I don't know what that means. Well, I found out. They're much smaller and kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, so there's a crystal in there and some capacitors. Diodes were for the disc pad. Alright, um, what is this? Ceramic capacitor for 0605. Got tons of little baggies here. Yes. <laughs> well, there, it's for two milks and the disc pad, right? Okay, so here's an at mega ATtiny85. So it looks like I got the through hole versions. Okay, that's cool. That'll make that part a little easier. So, and then here's the disc pad, which is just a, a macro pad, but it takes a big full size thing. Oh, I thought there was something else in here. There's the, the plate for it. Another PCB. And then this random, I'm assuming that's humidity. Temperature and humidity. You told me at one point, but I don't, don't remember what it was. <clears throat> okay. Two or three SMDs. The fuse. Resistors. Whole bunch of stuff. No, there's no no need to worry about freezing in the dungeon. I have a perfectly good space heater about four feet to my left. Keeps it nice and toasty in here. In fact, it is often too warm, even though it's on its lowest setting. And I take that back. It's not on its lowest setting. But yeah, it is. Okay. It's on its lowest setting, and it's still often too warm in here. <clears throat> Plus, it's much... Uh, oh, yeah. Here are the other, the other... There's a Charlie pad. Oh, that's right. Okay. Well, we've got all kinds of fun stuff in this box. This will be the box of like, I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to pull one of these things out, which is kind of what today is. Because it was like, oh, okay, okay. So there's full size at Mega. There's a AT Tiny 85, another AT Tiny 85, another AT Tiny 85. And then here's the through-hole versions of that. So we've got a bunch of little controllers here. These are the ones that, like, this is the one that the Torn uses that you can't find. 
So if you want one of these, I'll sell it to you for five grand. <laughs> Selling the free thing for for good money. Um, I need a. Here, I'll just put. We'll just stick these here so they don't get lost. Because otherwise they will. I'll put these next to it. I really would like a proper parts tray, but that little lid works just fine. Yeah, I preheat the basement to 325 degrees centigrade. Or Celsius, whatever. So I come down here and I just... Like a sauna... Okay, so let's get cracking here. Um, so there's not really a build guide for this yet, I don't think. So we've got a few pictures from Jerry where what all the components are and where they go. Let me see. How do I want to pull this up so y'all can see it? Oh no, I... Sorry, I, that was not meant to be any kind of, like... There's no build guide for this, so I'm gonna have to do it. No, that was just going, like... We gotta do it, we gotta do it ourselves. Alright, let me pull up Obsidian here. We're gonna, we're gonna try this real quick. Pictures... Now, can I drag directly into Obsidian? Oh my god, I can. This is beautiful. No, oh, maybe not. Oh, I can drag the link to it in. But I want to drag the actual image in so it stores it too. So let's do this. No plot. All right. There we go. Beautiful. Can I pop this out? but I can close these. Hang on, I'm trying to get it so I have a sanitized place to show these images. Okay. Let's pull up... Obsidian. Doesn't need to be that wide, so we'll narrow it a bit. Sorry, this is really highly entertaining content, you watching me move a mouse around and talk to myself. But I assure you, it is in. It is for a good reason. Alright, now well, let's just put this down here. There we go. Transition. Oh, wait, 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 wait have a perfect little spot over here on the left. There we go. Beautiful. Can I shrink that just a touch? There. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Try to do the RGB LEDs first. They're on the other side. Okay, cool. I might try to do those first. I will, will try to do those first. Jerry just messaged me saying he is going to work on the README while I stream. Uh, so I'm going to have to make sure to hit all of the sharp edges so that he can account for those in the build guide. 
Fortunately, I have, I believe, three of these PCBs. So we get two and a half attempts because I don't have the parts for three, but I do have a PCB, a third PCB. Either that or I had one in the box and I put my other one. I don't because he sent me one of these or he didn't even send it to me. Like I've got it at the, the meetup, I think. So anyways, really with readme pages, it's like, at least for me, and I've built a couple of keyboards. Uh, I just need to know where everything goes. I need pictures of the PCB and like, especially if it's embedded components like this, like what values, you know, cause it's sure it's got the 0.1, .1 microfad there, but sometimes they're not actually marked that well, but you give me a picture of it and I can do with that and a schematic for especially if you have RGBs for troubleshooting purposes. So I know what pin on the controller, you know, where things are on the board. Give me those things and I'm super stoked. I'm very happy about that. So, okay. So Jerry says, do the other side, the RGBs first. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a little dab of flux and then the hard part is trying to figure out what the orientation is looks like then it's on the upper right the notch so let me get out the box and find the RGB bag Actually, let me get a second box out so I can move stuff around. Okay. So, oh, these are the LEDs. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Oh, and Jerry is also confident in my soldering abilities. Didn't give me any spares. <laughs> Unless he's not. And he said, I'm so not confident in your soldering abilities that I give you twice as many of everything. I only ordered one, but he sent me two full kits. Okay. This is going to be fun doing this. Ah, it's teeny tiny LEDs. I can't even get into the thing to get under the, the plastic to pull it off. There we go. I have four? Well, I have four boards, but I don't have four Oh, I see what you're saying. I have four RGBs, right. But I have two milks and components for two milks, I, I assume. All right. So strategy here, I think what I'm going to do, I can't even flip this over. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I've fallen into a trap. And now I've lost one. Well, great. It hasn't hit the floor though, so it's... It can be found. But I dropped it. There it is. Okay, so this LED... Looks... Very similar on both sides. So I was flipping it over and not realizing that I was actually... Like, I didn't think I was. Okay. Man. LED schematic. Okay. No, Docker. I don't want to download another freaking update. Okay. Okay, so there's a tiny little mark on here. 
on the bottom that has an arrow to the pad, I think. Oh man, okay. Now, I think I'm just gonna bust out the microscope. I was debating just grabbing my loop, but I think I'm gonna be using this a lot today. So, let's do this. There's actually one thing I wanna change real quick here. Stream settings. Auto stop is disabled, okay. I haven't found that pearl red. I don't know where it is. All right, let's see. With microscope? Okay, that messes things up a little bit. We're just gonna add the microscope. Uh, display capture, video capture device, microscope, boom. <laughs> there we go okay okay all right so we have a microscope okay So there is the little notch in the corner. It is indeed a USB microscope. All right, so let me find my Discord again. Okay, so arrow points at, well, I mean, it says it points at it, but like, Right, but is it is this pointing is it pointing down or is it attached to the upper left? Like that that's a little confusing to me. Cuz I would say that's attached to the upper left. But I think you're probably right, based on the image you sent me. So we're gonna go with that. Okay, comes out of D out, points of EDD, gotcha. Cool, okay, so, and VDD is the corner on the PCB with a little white hard to see on that one that upper right corner okay so let me slap this over here sorry if you're getting any motion blur sickness stuff as a result of the camera I do actually have a little mount for it, and I've seen it used successfully with that. Not this particular one necessarily, but... Okay. Oh no, wait. What I was going to do is before I tried to put the... Yeah, Freya, I've been doing this a while. I've gathered a lot of stuff. <laughs> Just gonna put a little dab of solder 
just tune the pads here. All right. So I'm going to just add a little bit more flux just so we have some heat conductance here. All right. Plop that thing on there. Get a little bit more solder here. Okay, it's soldered on that side, but it's crooked. Teeny tiny bit more flux. And let's get some solder on there. Hopefully that works. And I just bridged these pads. So let me undo that. Oh no, that's not a bridge. That's a single pad. Okay. I'm actually kind of glad I have a second PCB here so I can reference it. Oh, okay, that's a hole. Yeah, that's fine. Ugh. All right, so let's take a look at this solder joint. Okay, I need to blow this up so I can see it. Sorry, this thing is kind of hard to get focused. And it's been a long time since I've used it, so. Okay, well that turned it off. Oh no, that's the brightness on the light. Okay. Sorry, it's been a long time. It's even harder to focus because that's not the focus knob. There we go. I mean, I guess it's soldered. I really wish I could test this right now. All right, let me let me try to clean some of the schmoo off so I can get a better view of this. So it wasn't soldered on at all because it just came off, unless I lifted pads. Which looks like I might have done. 
Uh, that's a lifted pad. Great. We're off to a wonderful start this morning. <laughs> oh, my. Well, rip. Uh, I am going to try to salvage this because I don't think it'll be that hard. So what I'll do is I will try to scrape to the right of there, just scrape some of the, um, um, what am I thinking? Hang on. Plus y'all can't really see this. So let me make this a little bigger. So that's a lifted pad. Uh, I'm going to try to scrape some of this crap off or the uh, the solder mask to the right of there off on the trace because the pad isn't much bigger than the trace. And then I'll just kind of extend the pad a little bit and shift the RGB slightly. Oh, y y no. <laughs> I am definitely going to make this... If it can be salvaged... I'm going to attempt to salvage it, and I believe we're still within the realm of salvage here. Okay. Now I gotta... This thing's a pain in the ass. Remove that scene. Duplicate, and then we'll put with scope. Of course, now I'm going to go back to the scope and be talking about things you can't see. Okay, now go over here. Turn that off in the scene transition. Now if I go to with scope, and show only, there we go. Okay, we're good. So I'm going to just try to scrape just the tiniest little bit of this solder mask off. And very carefully, because I don't want to scrape, scrape the solder off. Or the... Copper. Just the solder mask. Can I make that a little easier to... Okay, so the silk on the solder mask is making it a little harder, so... Okay, let's keep scraping here. So it's hard to tell just because there's so much light and it's just so all you're seeing is a reflection basically. And if I turn the light down, then it just adjusts the exposure to compensate. But I think we've successfully scraped off some of the pad there. I'm going to try to tin it real quick. So just a little dab of flux. Oh, so you weren't putting the 1515 on there just to troll me? I'm going to still go with that. You put it on here just to troll me. All right. Let's take a look here. All right. 
I am going to call that tinned. I think that's good enough. So we're going to try this again. No, frig. Okay, that side is soldered. A little bit more flux under here. I'm going to try to get just a little bit more heat under there because it looks like it might just be sitting on top of the pads. Not actually fused with the pads. Okay. So that time I saw a little bit of flow happen with the solder. See if I can't push this down on the other side just a little bit. So make it flat. Whoops, okay. I am much more confident about this one. So let's let's zoom. Let's take a look with the microscope. If we can get in there at all. It's gonna be hard. Oh god. What have I done? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll find out in a little bit if it works or not. Since we've already kind of... Well, I, I'm going to kind of write... Not necessarily write this off, but I'm going to... Um, I'm going to say that this is our practice board. So I'm going to try something else. We're going to have some fun with some hot air.
once I get its cord untangled from everything else over here. Oh my god. Well, we don't even need paste. A little bit of flux. A little bit of tin the pads. A little bit more flux. Okay, and this thing is stuck to my tweezers, which is extra fun. And by fun, I mean makes me want to scream. Okay. Is that a hot air joke? That I'm full of hot air. Okay. So we'll wait for this to heat up. And then... Try not to burn the house down. Oop. Okay. Ah. Okay, Jerry, I hate you. You are officially banned from my life. Okay. 
Screw flux, we're doing paste. Well, it won't solder and stick to the PCB, but it would stick to my work mat. See, the fun part now is I can't see the pads, so I have no idea if this is aligned at all. Whoops. Well, there's certainly solder on this. I don't think it's right in any way. But there's solder. <laughs> Oh man, okay, this is definitely a test of my patience and skills and everything. Okay. Especially because everything is a fucking mess on my desk and I'm just getting frustrated. Alright. Take a little sip. Back to the iron as I drop it. I honestly don't know why anyone would subject themselves to this, let alone doing it on the internet for all to see. I, I do this for y'all. I hope you know that. This is absolutely selfless, selfless labor. And I also will recognize that yes, this would probably be a whole lot easier with leaded solder. Okay, you know what? I think this one is good. I think I managed to, despite 
everything. Do this one decently well. So you can see the pads over on the left here with some solder on them. Oh my god, I can't even with this friggin' microscope. Whatever. Looks fine. We'll roll with it for now. Okay, the rest of the stuff should be easy. I mean, they're small components, but they're either big pads or there's not like, they're not, the pads aren't underneath the thing. They're kind of off on the sides. Um, and worst comes to worst, we'll build this other one without the RGBs and then try to add them on because I can always, well, I can always just pull these off. You hit, the, hit it with a hot air gun and then turn it off or and pull it off. So, um, if need be, or if necessary. And I want to change, I want to check something real quick in OBS. Um... Well, I don't know, whatever. The thing I was going to check in OBS, OBS has this weird thing that when I'm looking at a preview of a video source, the the parts around it are gray, but they flash like like a epileptic seizure inducing flash. And it's really annoying and I don't know how to get rid of it. I'm pretty sure it's just a bug, but like... It's been going on like this for months. Check for shorts on the header on top. Oh. Good call. Is that why you put those, that header there? Or is that so you can do a RGB or LED strip too? Because if you put that there for troubleshooting purposes, that's really cool. So five volt ground, no continuity, five volt RGB, no continuity, RGB ground, no continuity. So at least we're not shorting it out. So that's good. We haven't ruined anything just yet. All right. I don't need these pads here because I'm putting in the surface mount AT tinies. And I am going to start with those. So the way we do in this one is we just put a little flux on here, get some solder, and then we're just going to drag some solder around on this pads to tin them up and they look really nice. dot of flux in here to kind of glue this into place take this stick it on kind of kind of get it aligned where I want this is actually probably going to be a lot easier if I use a second hand tool or a third hand tool. So the PCB itself doesn't move around while I'm doing this. So 
So can this do RGB strip and underglow at the same time? Or uh, backlighting at the same time? Like the RGB strip is for the bottom and the then you have the top. Okay. Okay, that's held in place. There are a bunch of there are a bunch of short, or it's a bunch of uh, bridges, but that's fine. Just right now, I'm going for... Secure it to the board. And then I'll pull the bridges off in a second. USB-C first, oh well. I mean, the USB-C isn't that hard either. In my opinion. Okay. Sorry, this is kind of out of, well, not out of frame, but on the low end of the frame, but it's, this is definitely one of those things where it's like, I need it to be in a place where I can work on it more important than it being perfectly for the shot. Okay. And I can definitely tell just from looking at it, but I want to show everybody else what these look like. So this is the pads for the controller. Nicely soldered. No bridges, excellent contact. Like that one's a little wonky, but whatever, I'm fine with it. Nice. Okay. Oh, it's not that it's wonky, that it's, there's a sharp shelf. Okay, no, it's totally fine. All right, so Jay says USB-C port next. So we'll do the USB-C port. These tall boys. Okay. All right, we're definitely gonna need some tape on this. And I just had a thirst, so I'm gonna get a little more coffee. Some water. Stay hydrated, folks.
All right, I am going to solder the feet on here first. <laughs> Apparently I'm not. Ow, ow, ow. No, I didn't just stab myself with my tweezers. You just stabbed my yourself with my tweezers. this way. Don't look. Now I see why you're saying to do that. Because these it's at an angle. Okay. Well, we're going to do it the hard way. How's that? Yeah, no, I'm 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 learning from my mistakes here. Jerry's like, ah, oh, god damn it, kitchen, what are you doing? Okay, so I still have a fair amount of gap between those contacts and the pads. We're going to try a little bit harder here to get this flush. That's about as close as I think I can get. Yeah, because these pads need to be flush against the PCB or the, the little the legs. They need to be as flush as they can be. So if we look here, you can see they're pretty close now. Close enough that drag soldering should work. But they were up quite a bit before. So, yeah. Okay. Go back to that. Lay down a line of flux here.
Yeah, he didn't see the angled thing coming. This is why you have me do this. So, like... You know how there's whole the whole idiot-proof thing? Well, the universe is really good at making better idiots. Well, you want to test if something's idiot-proof. Give it to me. I will put it to the test. All right. We've got a mess here, and that's fine. Let me see if I can't move this so I can have both up at the same time. I don't have to keep going back and forth all the time. There. Transition. Okay. Put down some more flux. Get my tip good and clean. Right now we're just trying to get the excess solder off of here basically. still bridged for sure Gonna give this just a little more heat. Hopefully it'll make it flow more quickly.
I really don't like this microscope. I'm probably using it wrong though. So... There's that, but I feel like I have to, every time I move it up away and then bring it back, I have to readjust everything. The light, the focus, the position, I mean, everything is just... Okay, well, we did one better and then one worse. closer I think now I can't tell if those two on the left are two bridged pads but also the more I look at it the more I'm wondering if that matters because they're not hooked up to anything but internally that might screw things up let me take a look at uh, the other connector They could be. That's what I'm looking at now is maybe those aren't bridged. Maybe that's supposed to be that way. Okay, so they are definitely bigger. So the outer two on each end are bigger than the inner ones. Okay, so Let's take a look at this stuff. So we've got one, two, and then I don't see any bridges in the middle here, and then one, two. Okay, I think we're good. I think this is good. Yeah, I mean, they're they're technically bridged in a... because they're made up of, like, two little wires, but they're so close to each other, you can't really tell. Here. If only I had a way to show you. So they've got two little wires there. Whereas the rest of them have one and then two more. And so, yeah, that'd be really hard to solder those separately. Cool. Okay. I'm going to put this back in this little box. To hopefully protect it from stuff. Ugh. Okay. Hard part. Hard stuff is out of the way. So now we look at... Let's grab a 5.1K. We have two, three of those. Five point one K, five point one K, five point one K, okay. Excuse me. Fucking COVID. So speaking of COVID, I have lately been having some mild sore throat kind of stuff and I've been really concerned about it but it's only been sore throat and not super much and like there 5.1k resistors oh but these are a through hole so yeah those I need surface mount okay we're good um and I was also like well you can kind of explain away the sore throat because I've been going to the gym a lot and doing cardio and using N95 masks and because of reasons I use a fresh one every time I go um, so like you can kind of 
Well, it's like, yeah, it would make sense that I have a sore throat. I'm breathing in all these fibers and working hard and dry air and all that stuff, right? But I've still been in the back of my head just like, but maybe it's really worse than that. And of course, you can't get a test anywhere. Like, Walgreens is like, yeah, we don't have them, sorry. The, the guy who, there's a thing on Twitter now, going around on Twitter, that... The guy who um, runs, like, the PlayStation 5 bot or whatever, so you can get the super... You can get, like, the the whatever the expensive video card that all the Bitcoin miners are using. It'll alert you when they're dropping on a Best Buy or something like that. Well, he has got that now for COVID tests. That's how bad the situation has gotten with testing, is that you have to rely on a rando dude on the internet to tell you when they drop so that you can like frantically try to buy one instead of them being like, I don't know, issued to you on a weekly basis by the government or something like that. You know, some say some sort of reasonable thing. Um, anyway, so I can't get tested and it's frustrating. So I'm just like, whatever, I, I guess I'm just going to be extra careful. Um, but I think I might have figured out what has been going on, and I'm 90% certain it's not COVID. So, I am a side sleeper, generally. But over the past couple of years, I've put on a fair amount of weight, and I have started becoming a stomach sleeper. I don't know why, but I've become kind of a stomach sleeper. Or where I kind of, like, roll mostly onto my stomach. Um, but because I'm heavy, uh, it really compresses my, my stomach and stuff like that. So what happens then, and this is what I think, this is, I don't know this for sure, but I've definitely had it happen. Like, anyways, it compresses my stomach a little bit. And what happens is in the middle of the night, sometimes I'll wake up and I've got like bad heartburn or where even, um, This is gross. Why am I even talking about this? Anyways, I get acid in the back of my throat. And I think that's been burning my throat. And irritating my throat. And causing me to have a sore throat. So it's not COVID. It is actually that I need to lose some fucking weight. And I lost a resistor. It's fine. I have extras. Because I have a box of like assorted surface mount resistors. I mean, I can get a long, I can get a test that takes me three days to come back, but my insurance company won't pay for it if I don't have a valid medical reason, like I have symptoms or something like that. And then suddenly I have to pay a hundred dollars to find out I don't have COVID or I do have COVID. And then if I do, well, like, what do I do? Just kind of stay at home. I mean, I know there's the whole like five day quarantine thing, but I don't know. The whole situation is just shit. And I'm really, really sick of people not getting vaccinated and not wearing masks and stuff like that, and now we're still in this whole thing. Alright, I did this a little bit backward. What I actually should have done is tin the pad. Just treated it like a diode, but we're going to do it this way. Oh, and also good luck getting an appointment to get a test. It's not like I can just walk in and get tested somewhere. Or maybe I can, but there's like a 20 mile wait. I don't know. I just, the whole, I'm just so disgusted by everything right now.
But anyways, I think my the symptoms that I'm worried about are not necessarily due to COVID. They can be explained multiple other ways. So I'm way less afraid that I might have COVID. You're risking more exposure. There's like some of these places are drive through COVID testing sites. So it's like, okay, great. Now I'm like in this long line of cars and we're all sitting here idling because it's winter and great. You know, like how good is this for the environment? And what if I didn't have a car? Because that was true until very recently. Well, not very recently. I mean, I've had my car for two years now, but like, I didn't have a car for six years. Yeah, and I don't have a job, so like, work pays. Great. And of course, there are certain type of people who go like, well, you should just get a job. Anyways, back to keyboards. I don't remember how that came up in my brain, but oh, because I coughed or I sneezed and joked about it being COVID. That's right. Okay. Okay, I don't know where that other 5.1k went. I'm only fluxing these on these joints just because I want them to look a little nicer. Okay, so the 5.1Ks are done. I'm just going to go top down on this thing. Except for the reset button, because I'll do that last. 5.1K, 0.1 microfarad. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where that other... Whatever. It's gone. Probably on the floor. It's not stuck to my arm. Okay, so I need 0.1 microfarad... Capacitors. 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. I've got to be extra careful with these because I don't have extras of these. Like, on, I, there might be extras in here, but I don't have personal stash extras. So, let's see. I've got one. I think I only have one of these on the board. Right there.
And I'm assuming these are not polarized. Didn't I just say I needed to be extra careful? Okay, so I've got the controller on there, 68 ohm resistors. Looks like there are two of those. Okay, so here and here. What's up, Ryan?
Ooh, are you doing that on stream? Oh, that's right, because he can't have any. Nice. Well, as soon as I'm done with this, I'll probably forget to swing by. But I'm going to say I'll swing by. Okay, so that was the 68 ohm resistors. I've already got the 5.1, so I need a 1.5k. Okay. And I'm going to keep these out because I'll need those in a second. I'm going to keep those out because I'll need those in a second. These are through hole. Through hole. I see now. Okay. 1.5k ohm and polyfuse, which I'm assuming is that F down there. So, okay, I think that's all of the components we have left for this. Well, that and the reset button. Excuse me. Uh, I wanted the 1.5k resistor. Okay. It's just one of those, I think. If only I had a convenient list. I do. I've got the 5.1k on there. I need 4.7 microfarad. You know, one thing I just realized I'm not doing is I'm not checking that the actual values on the components are correct. I'm just trusting that Jerry's bagging, which is probably fine. Probably fine. But it's one of those, one of those things where it's like trust, or as Patrick Collison would say, trust but validate, or trust but verify, or something like that. Or no, no, his was trust and amplify. Never mind. Um, but someone says like trust but validate. Like if I hand you a thing and I say, hey, this is a one point five. Kilo ohm resistor. That's probably what it is. And if it isn't, then it's probably a mistake and not malice. And I'm pretty sure, other than being subjecting me to those tiny, tiny RGBs, pretty sure Jerry isn't malicious. Oh, come on. There. Okay. 
No, I think there's reset buttons in the box. Or maybe that's for a different board that you sent me. But I'm pretty sure there's little buttons. I could swear. I mean, you know, an evil person would say that they're good. The whole deception thing. I hear you there. I too am getting old and fuzzy. And I don't mean my unkempt beard. Although that too. Okay. I am going to close this off. All right, let's see if uh, let's the smoke out. Sorry for the armpit shot. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> there was literally a little whiff of smoke that came off. Not even going to lie. I don't know if y'all saw that on the camera. Oh, no, it's definitely smoking. Probably those art those RGBs. <laughs> okay, well we have some continuity between Five volt and ground. We have 120 kilo ohms of resistance. Let me just see if I can pinpoint where the smoke was coming from. Oh, hey, look, one of them is actually kind of working. That's hilarious. I mean, there's, as far as I know, there's no firmware on this thing. Unless, unless Jerry, you like flashed this somehow before I got it or before you sent it to me. 
I don't know what it would be doing. But it's kind of fun that one of the RGBs lights up, despite, you know, <laughs> despite everything I tried to do, or I, I tried, you know, I did to it. But yeah, I suspect that that RGB just burnt itself out. Which is fine. Blank SMD. Okay, cool. So now the fun part is how do I flash this? Because you said it has to be ISP flashed, right? It doesn't just have a USB bootloader. Well, I thought I had one of those. I'm like 90% certain I have one of those ISP flashing tools. But I don't know what... That's very cool. I'm glad to have inspired you to get a dactyl. One of these days, I am probably going to end up building this, which is a skeletal. I need to trim all the supports out and fix this because I was trying to pry, trying to pry this off of my bed. And, uh, bent that, but you know, that's a useless thumb key anyways, because these are my two thumb keys, so that's I could just you know leave it out. Need to connect four pins and power, okay? But I, I thought you put a breakout on here for that. Like I just soldered some headers in or something. But I could just solder the headers into those pin holes and then I'm going to see if I can find this programmer. And I just found a bunch of tips. Oh, 
Okay, I am going to run upstairs real quick because I think if I have it, that's where it is. I, I'm like 90% certain I bought one. Or two, maybe. Or like someone sent me one, even. So I have multiple of them, I just don't know where they are. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I found one. Got this ST-Link V2. No idea how to use it. We're gonna find out. So, so we don't brick something that's already soldered. And because it'll probably be a little easier to do this with a breadboard. Let's throw this in a breadboard. Because they're both AT Tiny 85s. They're just a different package. So I should just be able to flash this and then figure out how to, what pins I need to put in here. That's my operating hypothesis. I'm gonna put these in here so I don't lose them. Oh, he even put Adafruit 44.92, so I could order more of them. Okay, here I have a couple headers. then we've got this and this and we'll figure it out oh wait 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 i did miss actually two components real quick i missed the diodes 
down in the corner there, which maybe is why it let the smoke out. <laughs> oh, well, two of them went flying and one of them's on the floor. Okay, that's fine. Magic smoke time. Still LED, no smoke this time. But the smoke might have already been completely let out, so. <laughs> okay, now the fun part of figuring out how this thing works. So. AT Tiny 85 Arduino board, how to flash the Arduino bootloader and run a simple sketch. Great. So let me pull this up. Tiny family series, tiny commercial controllers, blah, blah, blah. Data sheet can be found here. Pin out parts. Oh, it's saying to use an Arduino Uno. <laughs> okay, let me a little more searching at tiny 85 um flash st link so maybe i can't use this use a pro micro as ISP Let's 
Because Pro Micros I've got. In fact, I have this thing, which is already... I mean, this isn't a Pro Micro, but it's it's an Atmega 28 or 32.8P. It's the same... Basically the same processor or same controller. See my DMs. Okay. Whoops. Wrong button. Great. Oh, do I need the whole thing actually wired up? I can't just do the raw controller or the bear controller. I don't have okay I, st I thought the S2 link could do at Megas 2 I guess not do we know ISP sketch to Uno board oh okay So what even is this? in pondering mode right now because I'm not really sure what to do. Um, I'm trying to think what I have available to me. Because I'm certain I have all the stuff necessary to do this. I have enough friggin' microcontrollers laying around. Something will work. I also have this bag of goodies.
great. I don't know. Okay, so this is saying how to use an Uno to put the bootloader on the Pro Micro, but I want to use the Pro Micro to put... an hourly build. I want an hourly build. folder, damn it. Move to trash. Appreciate it. Wait, tools, programmer, Arduino as ISP. At Mega 32U4? Are we getting somewhere? I believe we might be getting somewhere. Um, let's throw a tip on here. And get it plugged into. So I might need to solder. I thought I had a, a Pro Micro with headers already in, or soldered on. So I might need to solder those.
So I'm pretty sure I have one somewhere, but I don't know where it is. It's probably on the other breadboard that I can't find. Ah, okay. Well, I had this. So I thought this was what I needed, but apparently it's not. So it's not your fault. <laughs> um, So there's part of me that wants to call this today and spend the rest of today actually unscrewing my workspace so that I know where things are. Because I know I have another breadboard with stuff on it that I don't know where it is. I was just digging through the various bags and of keyboards and boxes and shit that I have that just a mess. And, uh, it's been a while since super frustrated kitchen has come out and I don't have any bananas and I don't think a banana would actually help right now unless it like lets me see through the mess so yeah um I'm going to start kind of winding things down a little bit because I think I am going to call it for today, but I might not. Um, I mean, I kind of want to put together the actual 2% milk. Um, but, like, I feel like people came here for this. <laughs> and I came here for that. The 2% milk, whatever. I want the 0.2% milk. I want the real deal. Ah. Now, we don't need to do it off stream, Jerry. Um, I kind of want to do... I kind of want to do the flashing and stuff on stream, to be honest. But, like... Watching me dig around for all this crap... <laughs> that's not very fun and it frustrates me because I'm sitting here like oh man like you're just staring at this this while you hear background noises maybe of me digging through stuff anyways um yeah I think I'm gonna call it for today um more of this tomorrow I think we're going to make, well, I mean, I, I kind of figured the firmware was going to be a stickler anyways, but I thought I was going to find this thing. It's going to hook it up. It was going to, you know, we were going to like get it flash something and then it's going to be like, okay, now how do I Arduino my way out of a paper bag here to make it actually like do anything. But we've got to, we've got to, uh, yak shave the mess that is my my workshop before i can even do that so i think um can you continue this tomorrow if for whatever reason i don't 
either find the thing I'm looking for or get to a point, then my fallback stream will be... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> my fallbacks, there will be a fallback stream. Maybe I'll build my Zaphod. Or maybe I'll build my Zaphod Light that I just got. That's it. Yes. So if um, all else fails, um, tomorrow I will build the Zaphod Light. Um, it is a full kit board. So there's no... Um, there's no SM or uh, PCBA, so I have to solder all the diodes. Um, it also has an a uh, an onboard I/O expander, uh, but it uses a Shao footprint. So um, one of these for a controller. Uh, the idea being is, or that. Um, it's to make it more accessible to people who either don't have PCBA or they they can take the you know the PCB and get a run of them made and then build it. They don't you don't need as much uh, you know high skilled surface mount soldering stuff because you don't need to solder all the stuff for an embedded controller. The IO expander is no harder to solder than the AT Tiny eighty five here. It's got nice fat legs and pads. It's pretty, looks like it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then uh, use a shell with it. And then you have options. Uh, could have used a Pro Micro, but I think he wanted to build something for the Shao. Also, when he did the, uh, when he did that, there wasn't a Pro Micro ZMK board. And there still kind of isn't. Like, the KB2040 runs ZMK. I have one running ZMK. It works. It's not production release. Whereas the Shows are. So take that and a IO expander and you've got a function keyboard. So that'll be my backup for tomorrow if I don't make much progress on figuring this stuff out. Um, anyways, I'm really kind of surprised that this won't work with... with the AT Tiny. Like I can't just hack it somehow. But yeah. Um, anyways, thank you for, <laughs> thank you all for coming by today. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Those diodes, those RGBs are a real pain in the ass. Um, but now that I've got two of them under me, I am fairly confident that I will be able to get that other one, get this one, fully working so we'll see um, but I'm gonna finish this one off because I want to make sure I got everything like if everything on this works besides the RGBs that's fine then I'll build this one and put the RGBs on it because um, I think I think using a little bit of paste maybe even mixed with some extra flux so that I don't have quite so much paste on there because one thing I was worried about is getting uh, un uncured paste or un you know still pasty paste underneath the rgb um when i really just want it on the pads but it's so small i can't just paste the pads i basically just paste the whole thing um and i can't just like burn it all off because things and stuff and i don't know what i'm trying to say um but i think the paste approach works um, maybe with or without hot air, um, cause this one, that RGB turned on. So something about it is working. We'll figure it out from there. And, uh, yeah. Well, so Jerry, you're saying AT Tiny is AVR. This works for ARM. My thinking is this is just, you could kind of see this as a generic cause the, you know, you've got the, um, this other image you sent me in here. Let me, I'll pull this into the, into 
into the obsidian dock, maybe. Did it work? Come on. Oh, because I'm not editing it. Okay. So, you know, you've got Miso Mosi Clock. So what that's telling me is this is SPI, right? So the Arduino as ISP is effectively just a SPI converter. And then you somehow feed it, you know, you, you like the firmware on here has an interface or something. You pipe a firmware into it and it programs this using SPI, I guess. I don't know. So I, that's why I'm like, this is just some pins connected to a microcontroller, but it does say S, SW clock, SWDIO. So this could be I squared C instead of um, SPI. So I don't know. At any rate, this ST link doesn't work for ATtiny85. That's, that's uh, good enough for me to know that. <laughs> It's not going to work, um, but I, I can't imagine I can't use this uh, just a regular Pro Micro as a a thing, or even this because it's basically the same thing. I just don't know what that is to be able to program it. So I'd rather use the Pro Micro, which I'm more familiar with. Um, and it's not like I don't have a hundred of these things. So I'm like, oh, I'm, but I'm burning a controller that I'm never going to use for anything else. Anyways. <sighs> I am I am pleased with the progress I made on this. I think this was, other than the RGBs, and even, even the RGBs were fun. Like, it's type 2 fun, but it's still fun. Especially when that one worked. Or at least it's lit up. Um, and we let a little bit of smoke out, so that's always fun. If you build something complicated for the first time and don't let the smoke out, did you really build it? Um, yeah. I'm calling it here, folks. Uh, stop by tomorrow for more milk or Zaphod, depending on what kind of progress I make the rest of the day. <laughs> All right, see y'all later.